And they answered him and said to the king, Yahuwah Elohim of lowercase Elohim is his name. And he proclaimed his name over us from the days of our ancestors. And he sent us saying, go to Pharaoh or go to the king and say unto him, send my people that they may serve me. Now, therefore, send us that we may take a journey for three days in the wilderness and there may sacrifice to him. For from the days of our going down to Egypt, he has not taken from our hands either burnt offerings, obligation, or sacrifice, because we're in captivity and it's never and never was, still isn't necessary. For from the days of our going down to Egypt, he has not taken from our hands either burnt offerings, obligations, or sacrifice. And if you will not send us, his anger will be kindled against you. And he shall smite Egypt, either with the plague or with the sword, either with disease or with war. And Pharaoh said to him, to them, Tell me now his power and his might. And they said to him, He created the heavens and the earth, the seas and all their fish. He formed the light, created the darkness, caused rain upon the earth and watered it, and made the herbage and grass to sprout. He created man and beast and the animals of the forest the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea. And by his mouth, they live and die. Surely he caused you and your mother's womb and put you, put into you the breath of life and raise you and place you upon the royal throne of Egypt. And he will take your breath and your soul from you and return you to the ground which you were taken, from where you were taken. Taken. And the anger of the king was kindled at their words. They pissed him off. This is Moses and Aaron, by the way. And he said unto them, But who among all the Elohim of the nations can do this? Can Buddha do this? Can Allah do this? Can Jesus do this? Can Muhammad do this? Can Krishna do this? Can your mama do this? Can your daddy do this? Can Bishop Nathaniel do this? Apostle Taha do this? Can T.D. Jakes do this? Can Joel Osteen do this? Can LeBron James do it? Or Oprah do it? Jay-Z do it? Beyonce? Cardi B? Whom of your gods are greater than Yahuwah? Show us their power. Because we're going to need to see it in these days of trouble. Just adding a little perspective. Not changing the word. Verse 51, by the way, I'm reading in the book of Jasher, chapter 79. I started at verse 47. Verse 51 again. And the anger of the king was kindled at their words. And he said to them, but who among all of the Elohim of the nation can do this? Who has all this power? Who has all this authority? Who can bring about life? Who can bring about death? He goes on to say, My river is my own. I have made it for myself. He didn't make a damn thing, but that's how, you know, these heathens are. Think everything belongs to them. 
immigrants they ain't about no this is our country lying their asses off we know they came from europe and we know they came from asia <laughs> we know they came from south america australia <laughs> where they're lying saying this day is oh how the heathen rage how they lie nothing new under the sun and he drove them from him talking about moses and aaron and he ordered the labor upon Yahshua, Israel, to be more severe than it ever was yesterday or before. So in other words, the more Yah start to reveal to them who we are, the more hostile they gonna be come to us because of who they know or beginning to learn that we are. It's exactly why he's reminding us, never trust your enemies. They have a perpetual hatred for you. I know some of you think they don't because you have advantage being with them. You will see. And Moses returned to Yahuwah and said, verse 53, skip. And Moses and Aaron went out from the king's presence and they saw the children of Yahshua in an evil condition for the taskmasters had made their labor exceedingly heavy. And Moses returned to Yahuwah and said, Why have you ill-treated your people? For since I came to speak to Pharaoh, what did you send me for? He has exceedingly ill-used the children of of Yasharel. <laughs> but this is not relative to the time that we're in. Jai has sent the messenger. He has sent us to warn. And many of our people are saying, well, nothing has gotten any better by the DFG, out of the DFG. Why isn't you who are listening? And Yahuwah said to Moses, because you will see that with an outstretched hand and heavy diseases, these kings will send the children of Yashrael from his land. Y'all say he's going to put so much heat on their economies. He's going to put so much heat on all the things that they love. He's going to have their children on opioids. They're going to be dying like shit going through a goose. He's going to start to cause confusion in their camps. They're not going to know which way they're going from community to community. He's going to crash all of their churches and he's going to expose all of their lies. And by the time he's finished with them, they ain't going to have anything to do with Yasharel. In other words, he's saying, wait and see. Verse 56. This is what Yah told Moses. Wait and see. It's what I'm sharing with you. At 3 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> Yah woke me up. Last hour, believe it or not. Say, hey, come out here. Have a conversation with you. And Moses and Aaron dwelt amongst their brethren, the children of Israel in Egypt, or in their bondage. And the children of Israel, and as for the children of Israel, the Egyptian embittered their lives with heavy work which they opposed, imposed upon them. Chapter 80. And at the end of two years, Yahuwah again sent Moses to Pharaoh. Two years later. Two years. Their bondage, their misery, the diseases, the plagues. Two additional years after these kingdoms were warned to restore my people, give them back what you took from them, reparations to my people, honor my people,
Take your foot off the neck of my people. And what have they done? No. They doubled down on the people of Yahuwah. Wherever we are on this flat earth, this has happened. They're using the immigrant crisis to cover it up. They're using the border crisis to cover up the oppression. Because everything that they have done has made our conditions, a situation, perpetually worse. But we're not done. Two years after they were warned. Again, chapter 80, verse 1. And at the end of two years, Yahuwah again said to Moses, or sent Moses to Pharaoh to bring forth the children of Israel and to send them out of the land of Egypt. And Moses went and he came to the house of Pharaoh and he spoke to him the words of Yahuwah who had sent him, but Pharaoh would not listen to the voice of Yahuwah. So Yahuwah roused up his might against the nations of this earth, those who are oppressing all the nations, all the governments of this earth, who are oppressing his people, wherever we may be scattered, and upon his subjects, and Elohim smote them he smote Pharaoh and his people with very great and sore plagues like the opioid crisis all over the place, crashing their economies all over the place. And then look what it says in three, with all of their streams and rivers. And when the heathens came to drink or to draw water, they looked into a, a pitcher and behold, the water was turned into blood. In other words, it was not drinkable, polluted. And when he came to drink from his cup, the water in the cup became polluted. And when a woman came to cook her dough with her food, their appearance was turned into blood, eating genetic, genetically modified foods. All the food on the earth now are no longer food anymore. Why you think they're telling us to eat crickets and, and bugs and insects? It's happening. And Yahuwah sent again and caused the water to bring forth frogs. And the frogs came into the houses of the Egyptians or the heathens. And when the heathens drank, their bellies were full with frogs. And they danced in their bellies as they danced in a river. In other words, tadpoles. I know some of you are probably thinking, how can a frog be in a, no tadpoles? You know what a tadpole is? A tadpole, sometimes they can be as small, they're not as small as a human sperm, but they look like sperm, but they're tiny. They're tiny enough, they're a parasite. You can drink it and not know you're drinking it. A tadpole. It could be right in something and you can't see it. That's what he's referencing here. Hallelujah. Verse 8. And all their drinking water and their cooking water turned to frogs. Also, when they laid in their beds, their perspiration bred frogs. They were sweating the frogs through their pores. Notwithstanding, all of this, the anger of Yahuwah did not turn from them. Yah turned up the pressure. See, things that are happening right now, brothers and sisters, it's going to get perpetually worse. See, there, there is a, uh, 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 what I would call, tell you right now, brothers and sisters, there is a, a patience, you know, challenge that we all have. As a matter of fact, let me stop here for a moment. I know somebody said, well, okay, brother, you just went right on in. You better believe I went right on in. So first of all, shalom, Yasharel. Or second of all, shalom, Yasharel. I'm here on this particular message. Because Yah has put upon my heart, there are many of our brothers and sisters, many of you all, who are beginning to lose hope. What do I mean by that? 
Let me be clear. Not hope as the as the world knows hope. Oh, they they get you know they they get in you know discouraged. No, he's saying turning back. He's guys put it on my to tell you all. Those of you who have become slowful, slack, you lost your focus. They've been saying this for a long time. I came to this channel because I thought we were at the end of the world. <laughs> I wanted to be a part of a camp. And I thought this channel and this leader here was going to create a camp. And now I've been there for months and nothing has happened. So now I'm turning back to my old ways. I'm turning back to my old resources. I'm trusting now the things that I should, that, that, that I trusted before that led me here. Now I'll become the dog returning to the vomit. Because I got tired of waiting. Look around, brothers and sisters. Open up your eyes. Look around. What is Israel doing? Well, if you don't mind, let me help you take a peek through these old eyes. Well, all your camps now. Listen intently. Listen carefully. Confusion is in the land. David talked about it in Psalm chapter 71. He said, I trust in Yahuwah. Please don't let me be confused. Psalm 71 verse 1. He said, I trust in you, Yahuwah. Please do not let me be confounded or confused. Distracted. Self-absorbed. Well, ain't nothing happened all this time, so I guess nothing's going to happen. That is a flat out, low down, dirty lie. That many of you have embraced. And just like it was when our people in the first exodus, it's happening again. The suffrage is increased. The misery is increased. Nothing has gotten any better. As a matter of fact, it's gotten worse. So what do you, many have you have done? You've become distracted. You've gone back to your old ways. Your old ways. Whatever they were. Again, like dog go back to the vomit. That's what that means, actually. A lot of you hear that and you think, oh, that must be something. Wicked dog going back to the vomit. No, it isn't. It's just simply saying that Yah showed you the way. You got tired of waiting and now you're going back to the old way. In essence, you're pretty much giving the most high the middle finger. You're just too blind to see it. And Yah says, okay. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. So, at the end of the day, you're confused. And so what you're doing is fixing it yourself. And y'all say, well, then you'll own the outcome. And you can try to stick my name on it all you want. Y'all say it doesn't matter. You're not Elohim. You didn't create the air. You didn't create the land. You didn't create anything. You didn't even create yourself. Many of you think you did. But you didn't. You heard this, this, this Pharaoh character here says, you know, you know, this is my land. This is my water. This is all my stuff. But prior to that, he said, what? Yahuwah. Moses said, no, Yahuwah created you in your mother's womb. Took you from the ground. And he's going to put you back in that ground. He's looking at, yeah, right. Ain't nobody greater than me. But as the old story goes, or as the old saying goes, we shall see. So now you've got confusion all over the land. 
the heathens are confused and they're becoming enraged. So they're putting more pressure on us by, again, opening these borders and using resources that they actually could have used to restore us to reparations. But when we asked about reparations five years ago, what did the Elizabeth Warrens and the Joe Bidens and all of them say, what shit? We don't owe y'all nothing. Hell, after a while, that Spanish is going to be the second greatest minority group in here anyway. Remember, that's what Biden told him right after he got elected. He pulled the old switcheroo on him. Kamala's going to do it or Trump, whichever one. Two tits on the same cow. It doesn't matter. They're going to they pull all these things they're saying. Make America great again and all that foolish. They ain't going to do a damn thing. They're looking at yesterday. Planning for the day. Because they don't, there's no, nothing. They can't look at tomorrow and plan for, I mean today and, look, and plan for tomorrow. Because there is no make America or wherever you are. The United Kingdom doesn't matter. China, Russia. It's not going to get better, brothers and sisters. So the heathens, the non-Israelite heathens, their perpetual war and confusion breaks all these things. What do you think that's about? You think that's about resolution? No, that's about desperation. They're becoming desperate. Why you think they're threatening each other all over the place? Saudi Arabia, all of them. Iran, Syria, Turkey. Let's not even talk about them vicious, dirty heathens that are in the land of Israel. Please. Go ask those, Palestin the, uh, those Palestinians about brotherly love. Why can't we all just get along? Everybody is the same. All we need is love. I'm going to put in this link in the description box about something about, about this organization called Mud Ruckers. Mud like Mud Rucker. And you know what that's going to be about? Human trafficking. How that all these people coming over these borders. I'm not going to get distracted. I'm just going to, I'm sharing with you the chaos that's going on. Right before many of your eyes, while you over there saying, well, I'm tired of waiting. I got to do something. I'm going to do what I want to do now then. I'm not going to seek y'all anymore. I'm going to do what I need to do because I'm frustrated. Well, just as you hear that clock ticking, it's ticking for you. Because y'all said again, my thoughts not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. And except, except I said it, it's not going to work. You're just going to repeat the cycle again, like a vagabond. Same thing again and again. And you're going to put money in bags with holes in it. And again and again. You know why? Because you won't consider yourself. That you got it all figured out. And you don't. None of us do. So when they talk about make America great again. And all these other things they're saying all over this earth. Bricks. NATO. It doesn't matter brothers and sisters. Just as Moses told that king. I'll tell all of you who are trusting your kings. Whoever's taking care of you. They're not going to get the job done. Like high guy say, maybe you might want to reconsider. But just like Pharaoh, no, you're not. You say, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm tired of waiting. <laughs> I got to do something now. All right. Give it a few months. And then remember this message. Remember this warning. So back to the camps. They're fighting now. Bishop Nathaniel and Apostle Tahor. That's Israel united in Christ and the great millstone. 
then ISUPK, Sakari. This is for all you woke Israelites who think that well because these brothers, you know what I'm saying, these brothers are these are the ones who are uniters of the people. Well, somebody first should have told you that uh, Bishop Nathaniel when he was in Papua New Guinea hanging out with Pope Francis or just recently hanging out with the nation of Islam. One is Catholic or what we call Catholicism. The other one is more or less with Islam, <laughs> Muhammad, <laughs> Allah. But yet these are supposed to be Israelite leaders. Independent. But they're no more independent than Jakes was independent, or Eddie Long was independent, or Trump is independent, or Harris, or Biden, or Obama. These are all useful idiots who are put in place religiously to deceive you, the religious. to keep you docile or keep you confused. So what are they doing now in the camps? They're arguing about the new covenant. Now I've been telling you about the new covenant bullshit for years now, if you've been following this channel, at least two years, probably three years now. Y'all revealed it to me. It says all lies, all conflated lies, great stories, but lies. They're a resurrected God. Great story about them. But it's a lie. And many have come here to this channel. And when they heard me say it's a lie, just like the wicked did or does, they flew. They, I said they flee. The wicked flee when no one pursue, pursue it after them. Right? Proverbs 28. When they ran. I thought the brother was going to do something today. That's not what I told you. So don't put it on me. That's you. I already know the footsteps, the footsteps of the righteous are ordered by Yahuwah. And I happen to be a righteous watchman. I'm not one of the lying prophets that, that Moses warned the people about in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18, 22. You know, all the ones many of you have been listening to. So you discouraged now. Gathering of Christ Church was telling people 10 years ago that they were going to Africa. Carrie Ann told everybody who's following Carrie Ann Given, oh, that the ship were coming. They're going to get on cruise ships. Y'all remember that shit? Hmm? A couple of years ago, everybody was getting a letter up. What you going to bring? Oh, Moria. <laughs> We'll tell everybody, make sure you got your, your, your backpack full of snacks and cookies. Whatever you like to eat. But a strange thing has happened. They're not talking about that anymore. Hmm. It doesn't at least make you wonder what happened. Better, yeah, shouldn't you be asking the question, who were they listening to? Why they were sharing all that information with many of you? Who were they listening to? They would have told you, you know, Yahweh Shai told them, a God or the Lord or whomever, Jesus. For his name not Jesus, his name is Yahushua. <laughs> Yahweh Shai. Some still calling him Jesus. The dolls out there. They're so confused. They call him Jesus today and then they call him Yahashua tomorrow. They call him God today. And then they call him Yahweh or whatever. Total confusion. But this book say if a prophet came to you and told you that something was going to happen, happen, that was a lying prophet. But they knew that many of you got jabbed up so your memories are pretty much burned, fried. Can't remember, you know, 
your damn phone number. Anymore. You used to know your social security number by heart. <laughs> but judgment is in the land. So now they're confused. So they're fighting over the New Testament. We living in the co new covenant now. No, we're not. We're in the between. So hard, that idiot with GMS say, oh no, we're in the middle of both. <laughs> I'm not kidding, brothers and sisters. See, I'm a watchman. I'm supposed to know what they're doing. So I watch. I pay attention. I listen. But unlike them, I was assigned. They assigned themselves. They got caught up in one West doctrine way back in the early New York days and they all branched out and started doing their things. And then, of course, you had the religious ones, you know what I'm saying? The Dows and all of them. They came through their little non-denational, you know, laying hands on the sick and they're going to recover. Ain't no damn body recovered yet, though. Casting out devils. What devil devils? Satan house is not divided. The devil they casting out was a devil who was always with in their minds. <laughs> Ain't no devil in your soul. You wish. The devil smarter than most of Israel. The devil, the devil, or uh, the Satan's, or uh, uh, even even their wicked doctrine says the children of 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 of, of this world are more intelligent than the children of Yahuwah. That's their lie they tell, but that's what they tell over there. But Genesis did say that Satan, Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, say what? Satan was the most what? Wise, clever beast I had ever made. Subtil. S-U-B-T-I-L. Look the word up. And many of you have been seduced and still being seduced by the carrions and the cholesterols. I wanted to call a, a cholesterol. <laughs> but that's all it is. Just going to clog up, <laughs> you know, your digestive system. Many of you are going to have a, 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 a hell stroke because <laughs> your, your artery is going to get clogged up listening to them lies. Redirecting too for you over here following that little witch, Deborah in the Watchman. All of them are confederate because they all take their orders from the heathen Great King, the Catholic Church. Oh, y'all didn't know that. <laughs> Brother, I'm not Catholic. I'm Baptist. Brother, I'm not Catholic. I'm non-denominational. Brother, I'm not Catholic. You know what I'm saying? I don't believe in Christianity. Yeah, but you're reading their doctrine. Oh, and even worse, you're teaching it. And if that's not bad enough... <laughs> You're telling people to believe it. You're telling them some spirit came to this earth, went inside of a woman's vagina, stayed in her vagina for nine months, came through her vi uh, vaginal, virginal, vi vaginal ca uh, canal, which is unclean if she's able to brew child seven days every month, give or take, maybe more. Book said two weeks. Came through all that in cleanliness, but he was clean. And then his spirit took up on a body. <laughs> and his spirit lived on the earth for 30 years, 33 years. Stayed in one little area on this earth. And get this part. He got killed. And he came back. And now. He going to guarantee you. A ticket. To heaven. Because you believe. And what happened to him? Because somebody told you he did all that for you. But you haven't noticed 
Pharaoh hasn't taken his foot off your neck at all. And not only were you taught to believe that by them, but they were taught to believe it by their dims, and their dims were taught to believe it by their dims for 5, 10, 15, 20, 40 generations. So now, God was exposing them, and now they're running into each other like bumper cars. No, it's the New Testament. No, it's not. We're Christian, but we're not Christian. You know, we believe in Yahusha, and Yahusha is not Jesus, but yet Yahusha and Jesus are identical twins, you know, Siamese twins stuck at the hip. <laughs> so in essence, they're just giving you a bunch of lip service. And so now, the daughters of Zion are confused. The men of Zion are just for the most part shiftless, wordless. They put on their fringes. They do their camp. They show up at church. Tell you Jesus saves, right? Am I right? Isn't that what Geno Genesis tell you? Why he goes around and builds his kingdoms, his kingdoms. There's many churches. We opened up a new church and three people got baptized. Oh, Jenna, Jenna, what is their name? Hmm? What are the names of the three people you just said got baptized? Oh, better yet, Jenna Jennings, since we know you don't know their names, can you tell us about the ones who got baptized last year? What are they doing? If you don't mind, can you kind of give us an update on how well they're doing because they got baptized and after all, now they're saved. Well, I ain't supposed to do all that. <laughs> In his voice. Ain't after me. Ain't after Jesus. But you told them that Jesus was their savior, that Jesus was their redeemer. And now you're saying because it didn't work, it's not your fault? Damn. That's a good one. <laughs> Gotta give it credit. Where you learn that hustle at? Oh, I forgot in the basement in your mom and daddy house, right, Gino? When you were 15. But see what people don't realize, you were an idiot at 15, like most 15 year olds are. And you're still an idiot. <laughs> Unfortunately, you got a whole bunch of other folk who become dumbed down listening to you. Am I right? Of course I'm right. The book warns us. If a prophet speak it a thing and it does not come to pass, that prophet should not be listened to. On the other hand, if Celestial and Carrie Ann, Deborah, Redirection, tell you about getting on the ship Amoriah, Yah and say that's what Yah told them. Yah say when they say Yah told them in his name, they are to be put to death. That's also in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18. Read it for yourself. Start reading at verse 20. Bring it on down. See, Yah was kind and grateful to a few of us. The book calls them remnant. He was kind to his remnant. He allowed us to be able to stay above the lies. He allowed us to stay above the deception. That's why when they were pushing their 2020 mandate, y'all know what I'm talking about, we didn't do it. We're like, hell no, we won't go. But we never went. We've never been followers. We never loved our enemies. Better yet, we knew who our enemies were. Clearly, because we had a little history, you know, that Yah revealed to us allow us to see who our enemies were 
And even worse, what they did to our ancestors, whether we be in the islands, whether we be in Africa, Asia, South America, no, it didn't matter. He told us that their seed would never change. He said his seed would never change. Joseph warned his brethren about that after having a war with Esau when Esau aligned himself with the Edomites and came against his own brethren. Or oh, not his brethren, but well, yeah, it was his brethren at the end of the day. Just like many among us, our worst enemies. But in all, he said there will be your perpetual, he said he would be your enemy forever. But some of you said, oh no, they're not. Because Jesus said, I met him when I was serving Jesus. And now I don't serve Jesus no more, but I'm still doing what I was doing. I'm still living under those conditions that were created. But just like Zechariah 11 and 5 said, they slay others. Oh, well, you've done your wickedness, but somehow you're not accountable anymore for your wickedness. Hmm. I wonder if you even know what that means. Of course they don't. Uh, those who assume they just apply it to everybody else, but they don't apply that to themselves. No, of course not. Not me though. Not me. Not me. Not me. Not me. You. 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 Not me though. Not me. Self-deception is the worst deception. Tell the book tried to warn us that Solomon tried to warn. He says the way that seemed right to a man, and that way is going to destroy their eyes. That's what he said. He said they're going to think they're right. He said they're going to be wrong. They're going to find out when it's far too late. But they don't have no patience. Not only they not patience, they have no discernment. They have information. They've got knowledge. <laughs> but they absolutely don't have understanding because that comes from Yah. Yah said, sure, there'll be a secret. Something hidden. That I would reveal it to an elect group of the remnant group. He called them his servants, the prophets. So except you his servant, the prophet, you will never know what's really going on. You'll understand it generally. You'll talk about it. You'll put on your costume to make everybody think you about it. But all they got to do is get close enough and sniff on you and they'll smell your rot. That bitterness and that jealousy, that envy, that rebellion, that witchcraft, <laughs> whew, that iniquity, that idolatry. <sighs> it will reveal itself. <laughs> it's a disgrace. But many accept those disgraces gracefully. Others go and do their own thing. I'm not waiting any longer. <laughs> I think y'all want me to start my own ministry. <laughs> it's no shit. That's what they say. Y'all didn't tell them that though. He didn't. And therefore, you have all this confusion in the land. All these camps, communities, churches, organizations, fraternities, sororities, secret societies, Freemasons, all of them, lions, elks, kawanas, goats, sheep, being led to the slaughter because all of them are out of order. And they're lying on Yah. They sound like Pharaoh. This master, I do what I want to do. You don't tell me what to do. No, Jesus. Only G Jesus is my husband. He is their husband. He's the devil and they're the devil's brides. Doesn't he tell them the story about the ten virgins, right? Five were wise and five were unwise. They're all married to Jesus. Hmm? 
The unwise one, they were doing their own little thing. They had their own ministry. <laughs> and the wise one, they just stayed in the fold. Nothing changed with them. Hmm. Are you thinking now a little bit? Are your eyes starting to come a little clearer, brothers and sisters? Because, see, there's a great tumult going on on the earth right now. Some of you see it. But unfortunately, most of you, since you don't know what to do about it, you're just going back. You just settled down. You went home. Let me find me another place so I could be. But you take you with you, so nothing's going to change. See, it's exactly, it's this, that is the exact reason why Yah didn't respond for two years after Moses confronted the heathens about the treatment of Yasharel. For two years, nothing here. Matter of fact, it got worse. Because see, Yah knew Israel. He knew that we were people that just said, tell me what I want to hear. Just tell me what I want to hear. And you better not upset me because you upset me. You're going to, you're going to, you know. I'm going to make your life tough if I can. And if I can't, I'm going to try to shame you. I'm going to do something. If I can't do that, then like I like to say, I'm going to take my toys. I ain't going to support you no more. I ain't going to be with you no more. I'm going home. I'm going to go home and tell my mama she want me. I'm going back to my heathen. Because my heathen, my heathen he, don't, he love me no matter what. Huh, y'all? Huh, huh, huh. But didn't he come from the wicked seed? And isn't it cursed, their seed? But somehow or another, you found a seed from a rotten tree. <laughs> And because you were able to make something out of that, your tea. So now, <laughs> your rotten seed isn't rotten anymore? Hmm. As the old saying goes, we'll see. <laughs> I like to tell them, wait a minute, they showed you a time or two who they were. <laughs> And you cursed at him then. Say, y'all don't get you, right? Y'all remember those things. <laughs> y'all don't forget anything. But now, you know, the, the weather's calm. And now you conveniently let it go. Because after all, you're idolater. And so are they, right? All of those that I mentioned, all of those, those so-called leaders, men and women who love Yah, with all their heart and all their strength and all of their might as long as he doesn't get in their way as long as everything go your way so therefore you have no virtue you profess virtue but you don't have virtue because in patience lies virtue I'll get that. So now you got mass confusion going on everywhere. The heathens are enraged. Israel is mad about it. Attacking their own brothers in many cases. Talking about the Benjamites. Y'all call them Haitians. Attacking them. Not saying that they're saints. There's some wicked ass devils over there. No question about that. There's some wicked ass devils over here too. No question about that. But they do voodoo, yeah. And you are Catholic, which is the same damn thing. They're in voodoo and you're in Catholicism. Well, not me, brother. I'm in Protestantism. Well, it came out of Catholicism, so let me to whisper to you. You're still Catholic. Well, brother, I'm, 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 no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not a Christian. I'm, I'm with GMS. Oh, brother, I'm with Israel united in Christ. We don't believe in the Pope. 
I didn't say you bleed to the Pope. I said you're still a Catholic. Oh, brother, no, we're not, we're not in it. We're not in, we're not in nomination. We have our own bishop. We have our own convention. I know. But you're still a Catholic. So why are you throwing shade over there, over there on, on, on the Benjamites? You're doing the same thing they're doing. He's just whitewashed. Catholicism is whitewashed voodoo. And voodoo is Catholicism out in the open. All religion is voodoo. And voodoo is a part of all religion. All religion. All camps, all communities, all organizations. If you're reading in that New Testament or you're denying the sovereignty of Yahuwah alone as the only Savior and Redeemer, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, you self-absorbed idolaters. Hell has enlarged itself for you. You can read about that. Not, you know, you're going to get a little uptight because I said it, but that's okay. For all you self-worshippers, you self-absorbed ones, all of you who think you know Yah because you read your Bible, you don't know Yah, you just know your Bible. Because y'all don't change. Didn't you? Haven't you? When you get agitated, aggravated, what do you do? Don't you change? Hmm? Holistically, how many of brothers and sisters? This, this is a off the, we're going to talk about this. This is like Malcolm say, this, we're going to have a little fire chat. When you get mad, when they get mad, what do they do? What do they do? What do you do when you get upset? Do you hold the line? Or like a very dear friend of mine tell me, she said she used to be a runner. She said she don't run no more. She said, but whatever the shit would get tough, she would run. She said, I'd hit the goddamn door. But she realized she was running and running, but she couldn't run away from herself. So she had to have a reality check. She had to have a gut check. And she had to stop. And she said when she stopped, her life started to come together. That was a moment of what they call clarity. But see, in Israel, we don't have time for clarity. We only have time to do what we want. And like the Israelites told Moses, I'm tired. I want my leeks. I want my onions. I want my lentils. Hell, I want to go back to the heathen. Because the heathen, you know, he loves me more than you, Moses. Because, Moses, you got me in this wilderness. Moses, you got me uncomfortable. Moses, I, 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 I don't feel safe. I feel better in Egypt. That's Israel. It all goes back to the vomit. And if you think I'm talking about you, you're damn right I am. If you think I'm not talking about you, you're wrong. Yes, I am. What did Johnny Cochran, when he was defending OJ Wicked Ass, he said, if the glove don't fit, you must have quit. <laughs> In other words, if the evidence is there, then it's the truth. But see, when rebellion kicks in, you don't care about the evidence. You don't care about your old ways. You only care about how you feel right now. That's why you're going to hell. Somebody need to tell you. So I'm going to warn you. Not out of despise. Not out of hate. It's my job. It's every watchman's job. Warn the people of their iniquity. Is that not what he told Ezekiel? Say go warn them. Because they don't know. Some of them don't have any idea. That what they're doing, going totally against Yahuwah. Because they have confused Yahuwah with Satan. Satan's with an S. They're praying to devils. And then when the devil gives them what they want, the devil does something that they want the devil to do to somebody, they say, look what Yahuwah did. That's a damn lie. Since when did Yahuwah start cursing people for a man? I'm just asking a question. 
See, this is how some of my brothers and some of our, our, our people have gotten caught up in the witchcraft or dealing with witches and you don't even know it. Because see, if you go back and you look at the book of Numbers, for example, chapter 23, there was a man or a prophet. This man was an actual prophet. <laughs> Not like some of you all claiming to be. Some of those that you know claim to be. And this man was approached by a heathen, told that heathen told him, I can make your life better. Aren't you unhappy? Aren't you miserable? Let me come in and fix it for you. But I need you to do something for me. I need you to serve me. And I'll do anything you want. I'll give you anything you want. So Balaam like said, what? He said, yeah, I'll, I'll pay you. I'll do everything. No matter. Here's some money. Go. But I need you to go tell, you know, Yahuwah to curse the people. In other words, I need you to go over there and tell Yahuwah, I want you to curse Israel. I want you to curse this person or that person. That's what witches do, by the way. And so he attempted to do it. But a funny thing happened on the way to the market. A funny thing happened when he went there. You know what y'all told him? What are you talking about? He said, Israel is not in sorcery right now. They're not in religion right now. They're not serving another Elohim. They're not serving the son of Elohim. They have not uh, gone into idolatry against me. They are not saying that someone else is their savior or someone else their redeemer they're not listening to the heathens the heathens telling them that their God is the almighty God Jesus or Yahweh Shai or whatever name they have for he's the receiver or he ain't God but, that, but he is God that's what they say confusion in the land but again we've covered that already it doesn't matter if they think Jesus is the son of God or Jesus is God if you think he's their savior if they think he's their redeemer then he, they are in witchcraft doesn't matter how you place them there's only one alone sovereign Elohim. All over the book. So Rock 24, 24. Say, I am Yahuwah, the sovereign Elohim alone. No one else. I'm not a trinity. I'm not an identical twin. I don't have a son. That's God manifested in the flesh. Never had, never would be. And I wouldn't let unclean men put their unclean hands on me. Because I'm pure. I'm incorruptible. So I would have never come here corrupted. Through a, a, the filthy vagina of a menstrual woman. A woman who has a menstrual. He said, no, I'm sovereign alone. Just me. Now, do I, I do have a nation. A firstborn nation. They are my firstborn sons. But that's a people. It's not a person. They're called Israel. You can read about that in Jubilee uh, chapter 2 verse 21. Say Israel is my first uh, begotten son. So I have a nation. Although many in that nation have rebelled against me. To serve the gods around them. Or the God within themselves. In other words they have become God. And they think they can project on me. Their desires. Therefore, Balaam went up to Yahuwah and said, Curse the people. Let's go take a quick little peek at that. Hold your position. It's still over in Jasha. Hold your position. Four o'clock in the morning now. Hallelujah. But working men work. They don't sleep when they should be working. See, they work while others are slumbering. Most of the people that have misled Israel, they never listen to Yah and let Yah tell them to get up at 2 o'clock in the morning and listen to him and then come out and tell you what he said. But look what he says in the book of Numbers, chapter 23. Let's pick up at verse... 21. 
and he has been, and he has not beheld iniquity. Let's go to verse 19. Yeah. Numbers 23 and 19. It reads, and y'all, many of you are all familiar with this verse. So Yahuwah is not a man that he shall lie. That's all those lies y'all been listening. The Bishop Nathaniels, the Deborah, the Carrions, the Celestials, the Charles Dows, the Rufus, the Medias over there too. He's just as bad as the rest of them. I'm sorry, brother. You need to repent. Come out of that foolishness. You you still lusting after Dow. You guys with this this whole man thing. You got better be careful. It seems like that to me. It's a, there's a homosexual spirit going on through straightway. There's a demonic homosexual spirit going through there, and they're hiding it with multiple wives. Because see, when a man is not sure of himself, he need a, a bunch of other women to make him feel like a man. See, but a real man, he don't need all that. He know he can have access to that if that's what he wanted. I mean, after all, shit, hundred dollar bill now can get you sex anywhere if that's all you want. This ain't about sex. This is about inferior men who are manipulating women to hide some vicious homosexual tendency inside of them. So you, what you got is you got a man's club. That's what you have going on there. Jen, look at him. Look at all these men. All these ministries of men. Look at him. All the men around him cheering him on. But see, there's something else going on. That's why they like to show their chest. Raise their voice. Am I right? Both the voice. What Drake said, you know what I'm saying? Forgot what he said. I'm delicious. <laughs> I don't know what he said. Eddie Long, remember? He was taking model pictures. Gay as the day is long. Damn. <laughs> Give us the pun. Gay as the day is Eddie Long. <laughs> Y'all has a sense of humor. But he ain't playing with us right now. So what you got is a bunch of men in the shower admiring themselves. And you know what happens when they start doing that? And the women, you're not much better. So, hey, before you start over there saying, uh-huh, I told y'all. Yeah, what about you? They may be homosexual, but you are witches. Because you over there saying that you're going to alter what y'all said. Y'all said you're supposed to have a man. A covering. You were put here to help him. But you say you ain't helping nobody. You're the table and you want to be set up. Or even worse, my dog and my cat suffices. Now you're in bestiality. Did you know that the book of Le Leviticus says that you're not supposed to uh, deal with anything that walks on all four paws? Like a paw, like a, like a dog has, he doesn't have hands, he has paws, P-A-W-S. Go read it for yourself. He says unclean. Cats have paws too, by the way. You see, that was hidden from you. So Yah told me to tell you, all of us, about the secret things. Some of these things are happening around you, and some of these things are going on inside of you, is what Yah said to tell you. See, they're not going to change. I've given them years to, to change. You've been talking to them for years. He said, they're not going to change. He said, they're going to get worse. But the good thing about this, all oh, brothers and sisters, check this out. Again, book of Numbers 23, 19. Yahuwah is not a man that he shall lie. Neither the son of Adam. So all these fools who are out there telling you that Yah came back in the flesh. Or Jesus is the son of God. Or Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. They are lying. He said he's not the son of Adam. Which is man. It's another word for man. That he should repent. In other words, he don't say he's going to do something. And then when things get tough, he lose patience and turn back.
No, he said, has he said it? And he shall do it? Question. So yeah, I say, I'm not alive. I say, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do it. And if you believe in me, and you obey me and keep my commandments, then your behavior should be being controlled by my word. Your behavior should be aligned with my word. If you're mine, if I am your Elohim, and you have no other Elohim but me, me alone, as you say, then why isn't your behavior aligned up with my word is what he's saying here. But see, this love that they're talking about, they're playing a dangerous game. Many out there, some of you, you're playing a dangerous game with this love. I'm talking about you love Yah. You're playing a deadly game. You think it's about winning and losing. You think it's about your pleasure. But like the song say, you about to get some pain. Because it's a dangerous game to play when you don't obey these rules. Many of you are going to be played the fool. Just like the rest of the world. Foolishly believing they own the earth. Like Pharaoh, it's my land, my country. Let's make America great again. Let's open up the borders and let everybody in. Let's have a good time, says the sorceress Kamala. Let's do this East Indian thing. Let's have a, how you say, a maj de trois? That's how you say that? Let's have us a, a little human orgy. It's just love. Isn't she the whore of all whores? Wasn't she going around with Montel Williams and downtown Willie Brown? And now she got an Edomite. You know how we, when we get an Edomite, y'all know how the daughters of Zion, they get an Edomite. They go Bangkok crazy. Bangkok, you know, like in China. <laughs> oh, he let me long time. Let's go on here. He said, man, he said, Yah's not a man that he should lie. Or the son of Adam that he should repent. If he said he's gonna do something, he's gonna do it. Has he spoken something and he should not and he hasn't it had not come to pass? That's why these people are not being led by him. All these people told you about the ships, the cruise ships, pack your bags, we going to Africa. Take the jab. It's healthy for you, it's what Jesus would want you to do. Now you okay. Leave that alone. <laughs> Leave that alone. But I bet you some of y'all regret me. I mean, it said like. He said, Behold, I have received a comment. He said, Behold, I have received a commandment to bless. Behold, I have received commandment to bless. And I have blessed. And I have, and I cannot reverse it. He is not talking about Israel. Or Yahuwah has not built any wickedness in Israel, Jacob. Neither has he seen perver perversion, perverseness, <laughs> perverted, altered, perversion. Taking clean and mixing it with unclean and saying because you think that is clean, it's okay by Yah. Because Yah need to understand your situation. You are a liar. Y'all don't understand your situation. That's you. Stop putting that on y'all. That's for anyone out here on this flat earth. That's what religion's all about. That's what idolatry is all about. Taking things in your own hand. No patience. I'm going to run this race. Yeah. You're going to run that race right into hellfire. When you're going your way. And y'all said, there's a way that seemed right to a man, but the end of the way is, is his death or her destruction. So you're not 
impressing anyone running your way. And it's not strange to see you doing what you want to do again. But like the proverb said, the dog going to return to his vomit and the pig returns to his mud. A vicious cycle of repetitiveness. Ever known but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Why is that? Because they're in rebellion. In other words, nobody supersedes their desire. Including Yahuwah. So like Balaam here, they go to Yahuwah for the heathen and say, curse him. Curse anybody who make me mad. Okay, you're not going for the heathen. You're going for yourself. But look what Yah said to him. Has there been found any perversiveness in Yahshua, the one you want to curse? Have I found perversion in him? Uh-huh. He said, has I not, have I, has I, has he has not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither has he seen perversionness in Yahshua. Yahuwah is with him. And, as, and the shout of a king is among them. The shout of a king, a leader, one chosen and called by myself. That's what Yahuwah is saying. I have placed a prophet, a king, a watchman, and I don't hear him I don't see him in perversiveness. I don't see him in idolatry. I hear him telling the people come out of every religion and that they have no other Elohim but me. That's what I hear from the king that I put in place. Says, oh, Arnold would tell Willis in different strokes. What you talking about? What are you talking about? Curse them for what? Because you having a bad day, a bad month, a bad year, a bad couple of years? No, y'all said the only thing going to be cursed is you. Watch. See, El brought them out of Israel. See, El, he brought them out of the bondage. And if he and he has, he has, it is worth the strength of a unicorn. That's a rhinoceros. For those of you like, what's a unicorn? A rhinoceros. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Yashua. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, what, why is Yah angry? And behold, the people shall rise up as a great lion and lift himself up as a young lion. And he shall not lie down and eat of the prey and drink of the blood of the slain. And Balaam Balak said to Balaam, neither cursed him at all, nor blessed him at all. But Balaam answered and said to Balak, told I not you, saying, all that your house speak, I have to do. And he said, I can't curse what Yah hasn't cursed, and I can't bless what Yah is blessed. I can't undo it. This is all in the hands of Yahuwah. And all of the incest and all of the access and all of the convenience, all of the take care of me <laughs> that you can muster up in the little tiny minds that many of us have compared to Yah, it's not going to change it. But just like Rebellious Israel do. They kept going. Balaam kept going. Ultimately, Yah caught up with him. He kept his spell casting. He kept his position as a religious man. <laughs> he knew Yah's word. But he didn't do it. <laughs> he knew about it. He had knowledge of it. Hell, he could recite it. He could have you recite it. But when he came to the application of it, hell no, we won't go. I'm tired. I'm going to go do what I want to do. After all, aren't I God unto myself? But I did say I wait, though. You see how that works, brothers and sisters? 
That's all I'm saying. You know, I'm, I'm wait. I let y'all tell me. Really? Well, if y'all is talking to you, why you keep doing the same thing over and over? If you repent it, then why are you still in the thing you repented of? What y'all is asking. That's to all of us, I might add. When y'all sent forth his messenger to warn you, why are you tell him, shoo, shoo, or you try to conflate it by projecting on him or her your lies, your truth? Hells and lords itself for those who perform and act and behave that way. Go read it for yourself. Y'all made you a clean vineyard and you corrupted the vineyard. Because you polluted it. Because you decided to sleep with the enemy. To make a covenant with the enemy. And y'all said you would have never do it. Under no circumstances. And any covenant that was done was supposed to be completely undone. That's not what Nehemiah talks about in chapter 13. To totally undo it. If you're following the other channel, you'll hear me talking about Joshua, the book of Joshua, chapter 23, verse 11 down to 19. What do he say? If you're in these covenants with them, y'all say you're going to get cursed. No, he said you're going to utterly perish. They're going to be like a thorn in your eye, a scourge on your back. He said, I don't care if it is a remnant of them or what you think is one of them that are special to you. Y'all say, I don't care. I told you not to deal with them at all. But you say you're going to do what you want to do. Because y'all needs to understand your situation. Now who's the idolater? This here said, y'all's not a man that he should lie. He said, don't do it. And in fairness, let's go back over to Joshua 23 because I don't want you to think I'm conflating anything, anybody. And for you guys who will pack your bag to go with Carrie Ann, y'all need to call her and ask her when she leaving. She ain't going nowhere. She trying to get money on her cash app, go fund me to go on vacation. But again, hmm, along with a simple love simplicity, right? Fools hate knowledge. Scorners delight in scorning. But you were warned way back then. No cruise ship coming for you. These, these demons, devil, female, she male, she male, he male, whatever they're cross gender males, whatever they are, spiritual homosexual ones, you know, the camps, the communities, all them, you know, forgot this, this you know, the, these man clubs, <laughs> they ain't going to do shit. They'll build up a little something for themselves, but they ain't going to do nothing for the kingdom of Yahuwah. They'll lie and tell you all this stuff. They'll add another church here, another church there. Five people get baptized tomorrow. But they're going to have a $13,000 mansion while you're still shitting in buckets and pissing in cans. But again, hey, you brought that on yourself. But look what it says here. Joshua 23, verse 11. Take heed therefore unto yourself, you that love Yahuwah. Interesting, he said it like that. He said, those of you who say you love Yahuwah, he said, take heed of yourself. You know what take heed is? Check yourself. Check yourself. That's what he's saying. You better check yourself at the door. I don't say you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. See, this is what happens when you're following people who know the word, but they have no understanding of what they're reading. This is what happens. They read right over these things, and then they run in the whole. Uh, they run to the opposite of the truth. You know, they got notes on the floor, pages and pages and pages and. Books and all kind of those. And I, brothers and sisters, you follow me? I mean, they just go on everywhere. But I'm going to tell you something. They do what they want to do. 
And they put that on Yah. Because they have no understanding of what they're talking about. That's why Yah sent them to be taught and to be developed and to be covered and to, and to shift, to move them out of the darkness, to get the dog out the vomit, the pig out the mud. But no, take it too long. Take too long. <laughs> Two years has passed. Then we just read that in Joshua. Two years has passed. Things only got worse. He ain't got better. So I'm going to do what I'm going to do. All right. Go. But look at it says 23 and 11. Take good, hood, take good heed, therefore, of yourself. Check yourself, you that claim to love Yahuwah. Else, if you do in any way, any way means any way, means any way. That means not one dot, one tittle. He said, any way. Small foxes, small, he said, don't you, he said, if you do in any little teeny tiny tinachi way. Else, if you do in any wise, go back. And cleave unto the remnant of these nations, talking about all the heathen nations, even these that remain among you, what you call righteous strangers, and shall make marriages with them, and go into them, and they into you. Know for certainty that your whore will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but you, sh but they shall be your snares and your traps. You're not going to be able to leave them. Because Yah has given you a strong delusion that you believe your lies. But in case you think I'm the liar, let's read further, brothers and sisters. But they shall be snares and traps unto you and scourge, scourges in your sides and thorns in your eyes until you perish from off this good land which Yahuwah wanted to give you. And behold, this day I am going to wear the earth, and you shall know in all your heart and in all your soul that not one of the things that have failed to all those things which Yahuwah has spoke concerning you, and all have come to pass unto you, and not one thing has failed thereof. So why are you struggling? Why are you under the curses? Why are you running from place to place to place? Why, when Yah punts us in the right way, we like the dog runs back, turn back. Why did we cleave onto Yah? Why did we cleave onto Yah's word as spoken to Yah's messenger? Why are we following Yah's messenger? He put him there to lead us. But no, Israel is in rebellion. Israel wants to do what Israel wants to do individually and as a collective but these words are clear he said if you do make leagues with them or go into any kind of covenant with them he said i'm gonna make sure your life is gonna be a life of nothingness until you die and go to hell that's what he mean by perish you're gonna live in your padded room for the rest of your life it's going to be padded because he don't want you to break your neck when you start running into walls. Help! I've fallen and I can't get up. He said, let me pad this thing for you then. Let me go back over to Jasher. As a matter of fact, I think we've said enough about Josh. Two years passed. Things got worse. Moses went to Yah. Yah said, hey, look, my grace is sufficient for real, for real. He said, no, I'm going to expose them. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let all of this, the weeds and stuff reveal themselves. I'm going to let all of the, the wickedness. He said, I'm going to expose it. Because if you know the rest of the 80, when Yah told the people to go, some of our people said, no, I'm going to stay with these heathens. Yah opened up a door for them to leave and they said, no, I'm staying. I'm staying with these heathens. And Yah destroyed them. 
You can read that for yourself. The night of the Exodus, Yah destroyed them. He said, Moses, get rid of every last one. I'm destroy them all because I don't want the Egyptians to know that, that you guys did this because they won't let you go. So y'all get rid of them and bury them. Now he said, but the ones who follow you, the ones who are following you through me, he said, them, you know, in the morning, when you tell them to leave, they need to follow you, Moses. So I've said a lot. Hour 25 minutes. But if you didn't hear anything else, what I'm saying to my brothers and sisters is that things are about to get worse. There's confusion in the land. And Yah is going to start to reveal to us those who are his and those who are not. So don't, you know, get all emotional because people are running and going and coming and going. No, hold your peace. Hold your ground. Trust in Yahuwah with all your heart. Because see, you got a bunch of people who know this word, they can recite this word, but they have no understanding of this word. They can tell you where the scriptures are. Again, if it's all about writing on paths, then I guess I must be a damn professor. And I got paths all over the place and Bibles too. And for a long time, I was just as lost as many of you. But you see, when you sincerely come to Yahuwah and you humble yourself, brothers and sisters, and you give him everything that you got, oh, then all of a sudden he reveals to you his truth. And then with all you're getting, you get the most important thing. You get an understanding. Because in, inside that understanding, there's an expectation. And that expectation is obedience. You don't go to the left. You don't go to the right. You follow Yah's word. And you don't project lies out there telling people lies because of your own appeasement. Because of what you think is the right. You don't do that. As a matter of fact, you take yourself out the equation. And it should always be, what does say Yahuwah? And where are the precepts? Line upon line. Look, I know some of y'all, I don't believe that. Well, that's your lie. The book said that everything be established by two or three witnesses. That's the same thing as precepts. So we don't care if you don't believe in precepts. I know I don't. Yah is my precept. Who's yours? And Yah doesn't change. Why have you? Because you don't know him. The simple answer. You just think you do. You want to believe that you do. But all somebody got to do is pull back the curtain and look and see you. And then you won't be so impressive. At least in the eyes of them. But man loves men. Boys clubs. Girls clubs. All under the guise that I love Yahuwah. Well, Yahuwah said if you love me and you want to see me, then you have to obey me. And in my obedience... You have to completely come out from all sorcery, all enchantment, all idolatry, including yourself, and serve me. And obey what I say. And my messengers. Some of you will, most of you won't. Moses led the people through the Red Sea. Y'all remember? He led them out of the bondage. They were happy going through there. They had a party before they left. But as soon as they got into rough times, what did they tell Moses? Who made you our king? Aren't we just as knowledgeable as you are, Moses? We're Levites. We're holy too, Moses. Why do we have to listen to you, Moses? Well, Moses said, well, you don't really have to listen to me, but if you know what's good for your ass, you better listen to Yahuwah. 
And since Yahweh was speaking through me, let's meet me tomorrow morning. And we're going to go before Yahuwah and ask Yahuwah to show us who he's actually talking to. Not who you, who you think he's talking to because you're with your religiosity. No, we're going to go before him. We're going to find out who he's talking to. Go read in the book of Numbers. You'll find out real fast what happened. I think chapter 15 and 16. It's a bad day for those who put themselves up to Moses who challenged him. We're the same as you. Well, they found it the hallway. No, they weren't. Yeah, I say, yeah, I talk to my prophets. I give, I, I, I give them dreams. I give them visions. But he said, but Moses, no. He said, I talk to him face to face. He said, I chastise him, not you. Who told you that you could do that? Where'd you get that from? Hmm? Oh, because you're in enchantment. You're doing some type of iniquity. You're in, you're in some type of, you know, self-idolatry. So therefore, you got mad and you decided you're going to do what you want to do. Who is he? Who is he to tell me about being on a Bible study? Who is he to tell me about, you know, you know, formulating, you know, a, a community inside of a community by getting building relationships through Zoom calls? Who is he to tell me, hey, I got a Shabbat message on Saturday. I need to listen. Or oh, when the video comes up, thumb it up to Scott. Who is he? Who he think he is? But this I'll say, you know, different than the rest of them who are in rebellion. Because what if Yah has told you to do exactly what you hear me saying? What if I am the one? Hmm? What if I am the one? The book tells us never despise the day of small beginnings. Yah knows who are his. He put them through a lot of things, a lot of experiences. He taught them the ways of the heathen. So when the heathen try to trick you, he comes to tell you, don't trust your enemies. Like a nail rust, so will their wickedness in times of trouble. They will turn on you. And you know this already. You've seen them, their behavior. You've made them mad before and you saw what they did. But they are charmers. They're not, not re, re, what the book of Sirach says, they're charmers. They're going to come back and charm you. How you doing? What you have for lunch? You eat today? And there your gullible ass is sitting there lapping it up like a lap dog. And then you got the other one. Roo, 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 you don't tell me nothing, brother. You don't tell me nothing. But what you know, brother? Who told you that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you too, dog. Not a fool hate knowledge, right? Simple can easily be enticed. And the scorners, well, you just have a good time. Because you know you're going to hell. <laughs> so you don't keep the tower. You don't keep the knock. You don't believe in nothing. You just believe in you. Okay. See how that's going to end for you. But I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, your rebellion is going to be the thing that's going to destroy you, not me. I'm not your enemy. I'm just Yah's messenger coming to tell you what thus says Yahuwah. And because I tell you the truth, you're mad, you're upset, you're angry, you're bitter. Because it hasn't happened already for you, although you say you trust in Yahuwah, now you're making your own decisions. And saying, Yah better do what you want done. After all, Yah, you better be listening to me. Because I'm damn sure not going to listen to you if you don't do what I want. And Yah said, well, how about this? 
Ahab spirit. Everybody want to talk about the Jezebel spirits. You need to go over there and read uh, the book of 1 Kings and see about that Ahab spirit. Say, so, okay, Mr. or Mrs. Ahab, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send some lying spirits down there to tell you to go do what you want to do. And then you're going to be destroyed. Thinking that you heard from Yah. It was from Yah. But he gave you just what you wanted. And what you wanted was to be right more than to be obedient. So be careful who you're listening to. These voices in your head. Yah never goes against his own word. Like Joshua said, nobody is to in any wise add to that word or take away from it. He said, if you do, Yah said, I'm going to remove my shield from around you. That's, that's the book of Proverbs 30 and 5, brothers and sisters. So all of you out there who are doing your own thing because you got tired of waiting. I've been waiting a long time and, you know, I'm just going to go back. I'm just going to settle back. Down. I'm going to go do what I was doing before, you know, I started following Brother DFG. You're making a mistake. See, at least I'll tell you. And I I'm not telling you in arrogance. I'm telling you in truth. You're making a mistake. Yeah, I did send me here. And if you knew my journey, how I got here, you would know. And I'm not telling you, I didn't fall out some goose egg. <laughs> All right? I'm not talking stupidity here. Seven years old. Sure was Gabriel told me. You're going to be here to see the end of the world, son. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to do a lot. You're going to damn sure make a lot of mistakes. But I'm going to see you through it all. Because I have a assignment for you. And I know you're bold enough to do it. Even if it costs you everything. I know you'll say it anyway. And Yah knows. He tested and tried me. Gave me a little bit of Bell's palsy when I tried to shut it down. You can find that on the channel. I decided I was going to let the heathens tell me you to be quiet. And I listened to them and half the face dropped. Was y'all saying, you know what? Moses, show me your hand. <laughs> Turn the whitest leopard. Now take it back. Turn back to Israel. Come. That was my version of that. And I learned the hard way. Okay, don't don't ever, ever, ever allow the heathens dictate anything to me. Learn their ways. Don't become them. Don't be influenced by them. Don't fear them. Don't anything with them. Don't, don't make covenants with them. We have to work with them. Y'all didn't speak against that. If they're aligned, if they're, uh, if they're allied to us, y'all don't speak against that. But they have no business taking care of us. And they wicked asses should know better if they're serving Yahuwah. But again, you become God to them. Some of you. You let them make you a goddess. And therefore you are damned and so are they. You let them make you a god. So therefore you are damned and so are they. Yah is about to close the curtain. About to bring the curtain. That's what I mean. Curtain call. That's the right word. About, it's, it's curtain call time. Kamala ain't going to save you women. Give a shit what color she is. Who cares? Trump ain't going to make America great again. America's done, you idiots. If you had paid any attention when he was president, they had rigged the stock market, dummies. Why the stock market is still doing well today, dummies. That's all Trump did is put his hands on the damn scale. He put his thumb on the scale. And every other week, he was, I changed my mind. I changed my mind. I changed my mind. Stock market was set up to, be, to show profit like a Ponzi scheme to keep everybody believing the economy is good. But look at your bank account. 
Well, Trump was there. We did well. No, nah, you were just at the very end of what was left. And now the cupboard is empty. There is a famine in the land. And Trump is not going to change it. And that's why he's only talking about, you know, the migrants and the, and the Haitians. And the, and, and the people in Springfield, Ohio. You notice that's why, you know, uh, 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 she's a communist. She's a Marxist. That's all he's talking about. Rhetoric. And he's using the Megyn Kellys and all of the Pierce Morgans. All of his heathen buddies. The, the Jason Whitlocks. The Candace Owens. All of them in their cabal. You notice all of them getting the loot. Hmm? Y'all giving it one good shot. One more good hit. And there's all the rest of the world. Especially here in the Western Hemisphere. Well, let's see what America's going to do. Let's see what's going to happen after the election. Not a damn thing different. Yeah, war is coming. Chaos is coming. I mean, they're heating up that skillet. Remember the king threw our ancestors, the woman and her seven sons in the skillets, frying them? Oh yeah, they got something special for you Israelites who love them so much. All your hope is in Trump. All your hope is in Kamala. Go ahead, go for it. Go ahead. But remember, I told you. Like I'm around this time next year. If I'm around here in December, January, I'll be able to look in your eyes and say, I told you so. He wasn't going to do a damn thing or she wasn't going to do a damn thing. I told you. Because see, like those ones you listen to, I'm not a lying prophet and I'm not paid off by them. I don't work for them. I work for Yahuwah. Yahuwah is my actual provider. And whether it be manna that some of you give or whether it be blessings that he's always going to make sure there's a way for Brother DFG. I guarantee he always has. And I ain't talking about slumming it out either. David said, I've been young and I'm always, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Proverbs 20, yeah, Psalm 27, Psalms 37, 25. I'm living proof of that. Nor do I sell y'all out for money. I'm not bailing. I don't sell y'all out for convenience. When he leaves, I will follow. And I have. I'm faithful. That's why he's been faithful to me. And he'll continue to be faithful to me. And all of you who are ears to hear, eyes to see. Who trust in what I'm telling you. But the rest... They're going to be destroyed. They're not going to change. They're not going to repent. They're not going to turn back. No way. No how. Not ever. Not because they can't. Yah has given them a reprobated heart. Their heart too heavy. Too much anger. Too much bitterness in them. Too much rebellion in them. Just saying. Unfortunately, some of you talking to you. I'm talking to you. Not using for reverse. I'm just telling you what you're gonna do, and you know I'm right. Hard pill to swallow, huh? When somebody's telling you what you're gonna do, and you know you're gonna do it any damn way. But let's end right here. For all of you who are contemplating turn back, the ones who have turned back, they're gone. I don't expect them. You shouldn't expect them to return. I don't. But all of you who are contemplating of going back, let me remind you of something here. Hallelujah. Let's go over to the book of Isaiah, chapter 40. Verse 28, it says, Have you not known, have you not heard, that Elohim Yahuwah, the creator of the ends of the world, same one that Moses told Pharaoh about, he doesn't faint and he's never weary? He's not a man, neither is his son of a man. If he says something, he's going to do it. He says this earth is about to be destroyed. Famine is coming. Pestilence, diseases are coming. War is coming. Mayhem is coming. Great suffrage is coming. 
Starvation is coming. Your enemies are coming. The external ones and your internal enemies. The ones you live amongst. They're coming. It's written on the heavenly tablets. You don't have to believe it. Still going to happen. Big problem with Israel because Israel feels that they can, if I don't believe it, it ain't true. Well, you're a lie. It is true whether you believe it or not. That's one lie you told. What Ecclesiastes chapter 20 and 22, I think, says a thief is worse than a liar, but they're both going to be destroyed. So you can lie to yourself all you want. You can reject the knowledge. It doesn't matter. It damn sure don't matter to me. My job is not to convert you. My job is to warn you. And I've been doing that for a minute. I just happen to love you more than you love yourself because I will at least tell you the damn truth about yourself. Because y'all tell me to, say, to call it out, spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell them of their transgression. Tell them that the things they're doing is not approved of me even though they want it to be. That's what he's really telling me to do and that's what I have done. And I will continue to do until he no longer allows me to do it. Because he knew he could trust me to do it. Because he knew that no weapon that you formed against me, he would let prosper. And I trusted him. He told me that every word that you spoke against me, he said, I'm going to get him. Don't worry about it. Still tell him. Don't be afraid of them. Whether it be male or female. Y'all told me not to be afraid of you, so I'm not. But on the other hand, you need to be afraid of Yah. You. I don't, I don't faint. In other words, I'm not going to quit. I'm not a quitter. I don't run. And I don't get tired. If I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. That's Yahuwah. But he said, there is no searching of his understanding. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Isaiah 55, verse 8. Say, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Why are you trying to say I told you to do that? Y'all say, I ain't tell you to do nothing, sister. Why are you lying on me? So why are you always lying? Why are you always crying? Why are you always denying? Why do you think your weeping tears mean something to me? What Yah is saying. He said, but the clever enemy would do it. He said, in their cleverness, he said they would start doing what? Weeping. Otherwise, trying to get you to feel sorry for them. Trying to play the victim. You just don't understand, brother. You just don't understand. Well, it ain't up to me to understand. It's up to you to understand. And I know one thing. Y'all not changed his commandments for you. Any of us. But he said they would try to teary-eyed, just weeping. Especially when you start telling them to get rid of the old nail. Say no, they'll keep going that way. And then they'll get the shock of their life when they die. With all those beautiful things that I described, they ain't going to be there. We'll see them every year. But now when we're coming home from worshiping Yah, it's when we left to go see them burning in hell. Isaiah 66 and 24. That's a part of that vision he gave me. We were so happy coming back. We were glad we weren't in hell with him. But we saw him every year. Reminder. They could have listened, but they wouldn't. They became impatient. Verse 29. He gives power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases their strength. So this is all you folk out here who want to blame things on your age or blame things on your health. Yah says that I give strength to the righteous. 
to them who love me, those who obey me, those who serve me. Where your strength? Where's your strength? Not in your belief either. He ain't talking about just you believing. He's talking about your behavior lines up with your belief. David was a faithful man, but we saw his faithfulness, not just in his word. We Everybody loved Psalms chapter 1. Those that wait upon your who, everybody loves, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Everybody long, loves Psalm chapter 1. David said that, you know, blessed are the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, or sit in the seat of the scornful, or, the, or, or stand in the way with sinners. But his delight is in the Torah of Yahuwah. And therefore he meditates on that Torah day and night. You know, he shall be like a tree planted by the river of water. His leaf will never wither, and everything he does, he shall prosper. Now, I wasn't reading from Psalms chapter 1. I'm reading for what was written in my heart. It is Psalm chapter 1, but if you notice, I didn't turn the page. I'm in the book of Isaiah. Somebody lying and somebody's in the truth. But y'all said we're supposed to increase in strength. That's what David said. David's life was reflective of everything David taught. David lived it out. You can see it manifested in his life. He wasn't sitting over there saying, you know, it's just a mental thing, spiritual. That's Christianity 101. Y'all knows my heart. He sure does. He says, desperately wicked and above all things, who can know it? Therefore, I judge man by his fruit, by his works. That's Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 10. Is it not? <coughs> Somebody playing. Somebody fooling yourself. You're kidding yourself. Thinking you're in and you're not. And it's not just one, because I know somebody probably said, Well, you talking about me? I'm talking about your ass, but I'm talking about more than you. You're not alone. It's part of your arrogance. Thinking you're the only one. You sound like Elijah. Everybody has gone away, and I'm the only one left. And I said, Man, if you don't get up off your ass, I got 7,000 prophets in Jerusalem, and neither none of them have serving the heathens. Not one of them. But you, on the other hand, running from a woman. Woman got you dangling by the damn collar. Come here. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, master. I love you. I love you, honey. Honey, don't leave, honey. Oh, honey. Honey, honey. Oh. Your weak ass. You ain't my brother. Let's get on here. He said, verse 30. And even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall, which is happening right now. But they that wait upon your whore, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up wings as an eagle. They shall run. In other words, they're not going to be sitting on their ass doing nothing. And not be weary. And they shall walk. And they shall not faint. That means they're going to be healthy. Exercising, getting ready for the apocalypse to come. Yeah, it might have taken two years after Moses warned Pharaoh, and yeah, Pharaoh would have made things more difficult. He did make things more difficult for people, just as they're doing right now. We started talking about reparations. They lost their damn mind. What check? We don't have no money. We ain't giving y'all nothing. Then start giving billions of dollars to Israel, billion dollars to Ukraine, and now giving. Millions, if not billions of dollars to immigrants come across the border. And not just the dang on uh, Haitian. They've been giving money to all these damn uh, migrants coming across the borders. They're just attacking the melanated ones because they know that's Israel. And you Haitians, you're a dumbass bunch of kooky, stupid fools. If you think America gives a rat's ass about you, you better line yourself up with us. Or you'll find out the hard way when your ass is on that tree burning naked. 
Son, you've daughter, you have come out of the fire. You went into, you came out the frying pan. You went right into the skillet. Ain't nothing good here for you. I know you hoping. So it was better than that. Well, for the moment, give it a minute. You better repent. Turn to Yahuwah. Put your trust in Him, not America. Put your trust in man. That's your problem. You want that white experience, huh? I know we taught you well because many of us want it too. Can never get enough of that white ice. You know it's colder than that black ice. White man said it got to be right. White man treat me better than any other man ever treated me before. That's because you married up to what, what a dog or you ran with dogs. You lay down with dogs. My mama used to say you come up with fleas. She was right. Don't put that on us. That's on you. There are righteous men of Yeshua right here, but we're going to follow Yah. We're not going to let you lead us around the collar. But anyway. Hmm? <laughs> oh. Hmm? Oh, I heard you. I heard you. Let Jesus fix it. Let Jesus fix it. Oh, let Jesus fix it. He my husband. He my love. Oh, he gonna send me a white man. Oh, he gonna send me a table. Oh, he gonna set my table. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Come by here. He coming with plagues, famine, murder, mayhem, starvation, pollution, death, annihilation, abominations, desolation, inhabitation, and total utter destruction. Time to repent, Yasharel. Shalom.